In this section, we will discuss business process management in more detail. We have already, during the course, studied business processes as exchanges or transformations of resources. We then took a declarative viewpoint, looking only into which resources were exchanged or transformed, and we disregarded the temporal aspects of the processes. Now we will go deeper and also see how the activities of the processes are related logically as well as temporally. Let's start with a couple of definitions. Here is one. A business process is a set of activities that takes one or more types of inputs and turns them into an output of greater value to the customer. And this is very close to the previous definition of conversion processes in OREA. It says that there are some inputs which are to be converted into outputs with greater value. And there should also be a customer, someone for whom the output is produced. And there are activities that do the conversions, but there is no structure on these activities. They are just a set. Here is a slightly more elaborated definition. A business process is a specific ordering of the work activities across time and place, with a beginning, an end, and clearly defined inputs and outputs, a structure for action. Just as the previous definition, this one says that input is transformed into output by means of activities. But in addition, it also says that these activities should be structured and ordered into a sequence with a beginning and an end. We'll now see how such an ordering of activities can be specified. Here's a small example, an informal example, of a business process model. It's in fact a UML activity diagram. Even if you have never seen such a diagram before, it's possible to understand the basics of it. First, an order is registered. Then, two things will happen in parallel. The creditworthiness of the customer will be checked, and there will also be a check that all the ordered products are in store. The process may end in two ways. If the creditworthiness of the customer is not okay, the process stops and the order is aborted. But if it is okay and all the ordered products are in store, then the process will end by the shipping of the ordered products. There is a vertical dotted line in this figure, dividing it into two so-called swim lanes, which represent the actors carrying out the activities. The left swim lane is for the credit manager, who checks the creditworthiness of the customer, and the right swim lane is for the order manager who performs all other activities. Starting from this simple example, we can identify a number of basic notions in business process management and model. First, there are the rectangles, which are called functions and represent some task or action being performed. For example, stop order or check order line. Each action is performed by an organizational unit. In this diagram, there are two organizational units, credit manager and order manager. The actions are ordered by means of selection and parallelism. After a credit check, there is a selection between continuing to shipping or stopping the order, depending on the outcome of this credit check. Actions can also be carried out in parallel. After order register, the credit checking and the borderline checking can be performed in parallel. This was a very simple example showing some of the basic notions in process management. We'll now go on and study process modeling language in more detail, the event-driven process of chains, which is a language used in many ERP systems, in particular those from SLP. Here is an EPC diagram for a simple application process. 
First, something happens, an application arrives, which here is called order arrived, but application arrived would have been better. Then we carry out an action checking the validity of the application, for example, that all compulsory fields have been filled in. When the validity has been checked, we go on to make a decision whether to accept or reject the application. If it is decided to accept the application, we send out an accept letter and the process stops. But if instead the decision is to reject, we send out a reject letter and the process stops there. We'll review this process once more in more detail and then making a clear distinction between the two kinds of nodes in this diagram. The intuition is here that the green rounded rectangles represent actions, something we do, and something that takes time. The pink hexagons, on the other hand, they represent events, something that happens instantaneously and doesn't take any time. So, first the event order arrived has happened, and then we carry out the action check validity for some time. And this is represented by the black dot sitting in the green rectangle. We can also think about it as the application process being in the state of checking the validity. When the check validity action has finished, the event validity checked occurs. And this event in turn, it triggers a new action, make decision, so the black dot is placed in that action. In other words, we are now performing the action make decision for some time. One possible outcome of the action make decision is that we decide to accept the application. If so, the event accept decided happens and we move into the action send accept letter, which when finished will result in the event accept sent. The other possibility is that the event reject decided happens and then we move into the action send reject letter for some time and when that action finishes the event reject sent happens. So an EPC diagram contains two kinds of nodes, events and functions that alternate with each other. An event happens instantaneously and means that an object has taken on a state that affects the process. For example, that an order has arrived or a letter has been sent. When an event has happened, this will trigger the start of a function and here the function is a task or action performed on an object to support one or more goals. So after an event, the function will start and for some time, someone will carry out the function. When the function is completed, this will result in a new event, that is, some object has taken on a new state. And in its turn, this event will trigger another function. So there is an alternation from event to function to event to function and so on. One event can never come directly after another event and the same goes for functions. Instead, events and functions alternate. Furthermore, an EPC diagram can also include operators that connect functions and events. Here is a quotation from the ARIS method manual stating again that events trigger functions and are the results of functions. The sequence of event, function, event gives rise to event-driven process chains that show temporal and logical aspects of a process. So we are now able to model more than by the REA conversion processes, which only represented the production and use of resources.